What goes better with milk than cookies? Milk and microscopes. That's right, my friends. Today we're going to be looking at different kinds of milk and milk substitutes under the microscope. Now, I've never done this before, so I thought it'd be fun to get as many varieties as I could of different kinds of milks. So I have four different kinds of cow's milk. I have some soy milk. I have some goat's milk. We also even have human milk. All right, without further ado, let's get started. First, we're gonna take a look at the whole milk from a cow. Most of what's visible under the microscope is the fat. Now, that's not to say that there's more fat than anything else in milk. In fact, it's quite the opposite. According to the International Dairy Foods Association, most milk is about 87% water and 13% other solids. Whole milk is composed of 3.5% fat. The only reason that we see this fat is because fat is hydrophobic, meaning that it doesn't dissolve in water. Inside the fat globules are vitamins A, D, E, and K. The other nutrients, such as proteins, carbohydrates, and minerals are all dissolved in the water. Now you may have seen the words homogenized or pasteurized on milk before. Let's talk about these two words. Homogenization is a process where the milk is emulsified or mixed up so that the fat globules are really small. This helps keep the milk from separating and it gives it a consistent flavor, and it also helps it last longer on the shelves. Pasteurization, on the other hand, is a process of heating milk for the purpose of killing microbes. If this milk wasn't pasteurized, we'd probably see a lot more bacteria swimming around. Bacteria in milk isn't always a bad thing, though. For example, that's how we get cheese and yogurt. Anyway, let's move on to the 2% milk. Now, you might be surprised, but 2% milk doesn't look all that different from whole milk. That's because it only has a little bit less fat than whole milk. Like I said, whole milk is about 3.5% fat. In the case of these two bottles, that means this one is 16 grams and the other one is 10 grams. Can you visually tell the difference? How about with skim milk? This was the hardest thing to view under the microscope out of all the milks because I was having a difficult time finding anything. The fat globules stand out in the other milks, giving me something to focus on, but skim milk doesn't have any of that. Nevertheless, I did find some stuff in here. I'm guessing these are all of the extra minerals and vitamins, but they just aren't dissolved in the water. Let's finish up our cow products by looking at my personal favorite, chocolate milk. As you can see, this one is very different. There are a lot of scraps of chocolate particles all over the place. And all of these chocolate scraps are a lot bigger than the fat globules that we were seeing. Next up is goat milk. The first thing that caught my eye is that it had a reddish hue to it when placed under the microscope. I'm not sure exactly why that is. I thought I'd maybe see something different when I zoomed in, but it looked pretty similar to the whole milk in the 2%. Now, besides the chocolate milk that we've seen so far, all of these other milks have been homogenized. Because we've just had a baby, my wife's able to produce milk, so this is hers, and it was actually her idea to put this whole video together. So big shout out to Laurel for helping me make this video. As you can see, there are some very large chunky things in here. Those are the fat globules. It's cool to see them larger and see how they clump together like this. Again, the only reason that cow's milk looks different than this is that cow's milk is homogenized, which makes the fat globules a lot smaller. All right, enough talk about mammals. I've got some infant formula here that I wanted to compare against the human breast milk. So here's the infant formula. All of those larger circles that you're seeing are the air bubbles, and the smaller ones are actually fat globules. I was really surprised to see that fat there. 
Now in full disclosure, this is a milk-based formula, but it's from non-fat cow's milk. So where did the fat come from? Well, I looked at the ingredients list and it turns out that this baby formula has sunflower oil, soy oil, and coconut oil, and a couple other oils as well. I guess baby needs its oils and fats from somewhere. One final interesting thing I saw in the baby formula was this crystal. It's probably just some mineral that didn't get dissolved. Last but not least, we're going to look at the soy milk. This is essentially soybean juice and filtered water. So obviously this one's going to look a lot different. Basically what we're looking at is just the ground up remains of soybeans. It's not too exciting, but it's kind of cool to see the difference between this and all of the other milks. So now I'm kind of curious, which of these milk or milk substitutes surprised you the most, or which was your favorite to look at? I really liked seeing the human milk, but the chocolate milk was really interesting as well. All right, everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.